we go together Better than birds of a feather You and me We'll change the weather Yeah I'm feeling heat in December when you Hey everyone, so I'm back today to talk about a movie that has been super influential in my childhood and hopefully in a lot of yours. Uh, we are going to talk about Toy Story 4. So to prepare myself for this movie, I watched all three that came before, Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, to compare and contrast as to what changes, what's coming, um, and kind of what Easter eggs I should be looking for in Toy Story 4. So how this video is going to work is going to be a little bit different than some of my other reviews. I know that some people might not have seen the movie and some people might have. So the first little section is going to be the non-spoiler section and then we're just going to go into the spoilers. So I will alert you when spoilers are about to jump, but in my initial review we're just going to kind of keep it simple so you guys can understand but doesn't give too much away about the movie. So for my initial review, uh, the first thing I want to point out is we are totally in a new different world now. We are in a new room with a new kid and there are also new toys. And I think the cool thing about that is we're starting to see the same characters that we're used to kind of start to play different roles. You actually see Woody kind of be something different than we're used to and his journey along this movie is going to be a little mind blowing for some of you all. Um, there are some changes that are going to like kind of catch you off guard as far as animation quality. Um, so it's a lot better. Uh, but some of the characters look even more detailed and more HD than they did in previous movies. Even Andy looks a lot different in his childhood scene and you're just like, what? Who the heck is this man? Just to bounce off that, Andy isn't in the movie 110%, but there is a great recap of all three movies and how it kind of segues into the fourth movie in the beginning. So if you haven't seen Toy Story 1, 2, or 3, which you really should, uh, the beginning of Toy Story 4 kind of gives you a small, really small synopsis on how we got to the point of where Toy Story 4 actually begins. We have the new kid, we now have Bonnie. We now have a girl that puts, it does put us in a different perspective on how she sees the toys. So don't get me wrong, Bonnie is no Andy at all but she's still really cute and kind of has her own personality and how she interacts with her toys and the workings of her room another thing i absolutely loved about this movie was it definitely kept the adult humor that has gone on in the first three movies now you probably didn't catch them because once again we were kids uh but if you actually start from the beginning you'll notice that a lot of this movie actually might not have been for us and actually might have been for our parents and that is a trend that does continue with toy story 4. um if you saw toy story 3 you might have also felt like wow it ended in a really sad way well Here's some notes for you guys. Uh, Toy Story 4 ends way sadder. I'm not someone who typically cries at movies, but I was legit boo-hoo crying, real tears, a little bit of snot by the end of Toy Story 4. So if you do get a little emotional, this is the movie that's really gonna hit you hard. So that's kind of the initial review. Overall, it's a great humorous movie. It's still good for families, and if you're an adult, you're still gonna enjoy it. Um, but now we're gonna kind of get into the nitty gritty, and so spoilers start here. So the first thing we're gonna discuss is kind of what are the changes, what makes Toy Story 4 really different. So I mentioned we're with a new kid in a new room, and there are some new toys. The first thing that is obvious is that Woody is now in a new role. Previously in Andy's room, Woody is the head honcho. He's in charge, he calls the shots. He's now in a room where now Dolly's in charge. If you don't know who Dolly is, you need to go see Toy Story 3 because she's in it. Dolly is now in charge and she's kind of running the show and Woody tries to have these moments of, oh, we should do this and we should do that. And you kind of see Woody struggling with his inner self, like this isn't my place anymore, but what am I supposed to do? You also notice that actually Woody isn't the most played toy in a lot of senses, he's left behind. You kind of see this transformation of where he's in Andy's room and he's the leader of the pack, but then now he's in Bonnie's room and he's literally gathering dust. And that's not a joke that actually happens in the movie. I think a lot of that goes into the fact that Bonnie is a girl, so the way that she's looking at her toys are a lot different now. And so you actually see Jesse take the place of Sheriff instead of Woody. So there's still the cowboy aspect that Bonnie likes, but she'd rather have the girl cowboy than Woody. Like all the other movies, there is a point in time where we are not leaving the room and we are in a full-on world environment that the toys are exploring something new. So Toy Story 1, we were at Pizza Planet, we were in Sid's room. Toy Story 2, we were at Al's Toy Barn and in some executive office and the airport. Toy Story 3, we were in the daycare and actually you, that's the first time you encounter Bonnie's room. So there are moments in Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 where you're outside the central room, aka Andy's 
And so that theme also still continues in Toy Story 4, where we are now taking on an adventure and Bonnie's family decides to go on a road trip. So we eventually get to a point where we are at this big old carnival, um, there's a whole bunch of parks and a whole bunch of kids everywhere. And so you're now having the toys set in a scene that's completely new for them as they've been living in an RV. So we come across a lot in Toy Story 4, which is a perspective that we actually have never seen before, is the perspective of the lost toy, or the toy that doesn't actually belong to a child. Um, there are several characters that kind of are toys that are waiting to be picked, wanting to be picked, or actually just love the life of being on their own and being a lost toy and kind of just jumping from scene to scene and being played with different kids at different times. So you actually see that when bum bum bum, Bo Peep comes back in the picture. If you saw Toy Story 3, Bo Peep was said to have been given away. We have no idea, we get no closure on her, we don't know where the heck Shorty went. Well. Toy Story 4, we actually get Bo Peep's background, we find out when she was given away, how it all happened, and eventually we actually find her again. Now, the Bo Peep we knew then, the Bo Peep we actually find now are two different Bo Peeps. Bo Peep now is such, I can't say badass, can I? Bo Peep is on her own with a broken arm, riding around in a skunk trunk and really exploring the world. And as she comes across with Woody again, you know, she's speaking on how so it's so exciting to be a lost toy, how it's so exciting to be able to see the world, and how Woody's perception of being a toy as to a kid is not something that she, um, is not something that she actually still shares. So you're kind of like, who is this person and how did we get here? But the funny thing is, Bo Peep is not the only one. Uh, you meet a few other characters that are also lost toys and they mention how, oh, we're at the park, how many kids are coming today? Or, oh, I heard about this birthday party that's on the other side of the park going over there to go play with those kids. So the lack of ownership is kind of an exciting, thrilling part of a toy's life that we have never experienced in the other three movies. One change that you're gonna actually see is there's creepier toys in this movie. I think the creepiest toy that I've seen out of the Toy Story movies uh, would have to be in Toy Story 1 and it was like this, the one with the robotic arms and the baby head with no hair and one eye. That was pretty creepy. Um, but in this one, the enemy of Toy Story 4 has a bunch of these dolls. What are the dolls' names? Okay, so they're called Ventriloquist Dummies, and it took me a while to figure that out. I just know they were creepy and I didn't like them, and as soon as they popped up on the film, it automatically became a horror film for me. There was actually a point where I actually jumped, maybe screamed a little bit, maybe I didn't, you weren't there, you wouldn't know. But as far as I'm concerned, those are, as of now, the creepiest enemies that have ever come across Toy Story screens, and I'm not okay with it. Now something I want to go into is actually my favorite part of watching Pixar movies, which is the Easter eggs. So the first one I knew I was looking forward to as I was walking into the theater is the Pizza Planet truck. If you don't know what the Pizza Planet truck is, you need to start at number one and get your life together. So in all three movies before Toy Story 4, the Pizza Planet truck has made a huge appearance and has actually been a form of transportation in some way, shape, or form. So in this movie, I was kind of seeing how are we going to tie in the pizza planet truck. It is technically in the same world, same neighborhood. It wouldn't be crazy to see it. And there is a scene where the RV is driving down the highway and I'm thinking like, okay, the pizza planet truck is going to pop up here right now. So drive by something. No, never comes, never goes. Still wondering what's happening. But the pizza planet truck does in fact make a pop up. It's just not in the way that we're used to seeing. Instead, the Pizza Planet truck is a tattoo on a man's leg. So there's a scene where Buzz is flying, in quotes, flying and falls into a carnival and gets picked up by a carnival worker. That carnival worker has an ankle tattoo of the Pizza Planet truck. You really have to keep your eyes open. If you have already seen the movie, I suggest when it comes on DVD, trying to find it again, it's really gonna blow your mind. The next Easter egg that's actually my favorite um, that you'll see refers to the movie Coco. So same carnival, same carnival worker. At his booth, he then puts Buzz up at one of the toys for a prize. It starts to span out from Buzz Lightyear and you see all the other prizes that are actually on the wall are for kids to get. And one of them is the guitar from Coco. The last Easter egg, which is my favorite, uh, it's happening while they're walking through the antique shop. So the, the antique shop has a million and one Easter eggs. There's more than I'm actually mentioning here, but these are just my top three. Um, but as we're at the antique shop, there's a part where you see an old animal cracker box and you see a diver's mask. The diver's mask is actually the mask from Finding Nemo, um, where it's a diver that actually took Nemo away and it has the address on it, something something Wallaby Lane, that mask. 
then the other animal cracker box if you've actually seen the movie a bug's life one of my favorite is the actual animal cracker box that's used as the circus that comes through and it's kind of a whole big issue trying to take the other insects away so those are my top three you have a toy story easter egg you have a cocoa easter egg you have finding nemo easter egg and you have a bug's life easter egg so now to sum it all up as you can see from my title i say toy story 4 is this the end uh, based off the way that it goes, you know that Woody is now separated and he goes off with Bo Peep and he is now a lost toy. He also doesn't have a voice box anymore as he gave his voice box to the enemy of the movie, Gabby Gabby, so she could have a better life as a toy. And it's like, well, what happens to Woody? What is his life going to be like? Well, he's no longer with Bonnie while the rest of the toys are. And at this point, as they are separated, you have to wonder, well, how will they ever come back? Toy Story 3 ended in a way that you figured it's the end, we're saying goodbye to Andy, now the toys are with a new kid and they're going to live a happy life together. Um, but yet, Toy Story 4 came and still gave us a great story that we didn't know that we needed. However, the way that Toy Story 4 ends, I think it'll kind of be a little crazy if Toy Story 5 comes out and somehow we all get reunited. That would just be a little crazy. They'd have to have some really good story on how that's going to work out for us. But in my opinion, it's over and I think it's a great way to sum up my childhood, sum up a story that has been such a big impact in my life as I've loved Toy Story 1, 2, 3, and now 4. Um, and I think this truly is the end of a great era. Thanks guys, and don't forget to subscribe below, down here, right now, today.